Cobain was one of the best songwriters of all time. And sometimes his guitar playing gets overlooked, especially when you compare him to other guitar legends. But he really set the tone for what 90s grunge sounded like. I know for me, when I think of 90s rock guitar, Kurt's sound is one of the first that comes to mind. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five awesome Kurt Cobain riffs that I love and have really influenced my playing. The first lick I'm gonna show you is arguably the most iconic one. We're gonna learn the intro to Smells Like Teen Spirit from Nevermind. This one is really simple. It's just four power chords. We're gonna have an F power chord on the first fret, going to a B flat power chord on the next set of strings, same frets. And then we're gonna hop over to the fourth fret, play this A flat power chord, and then over to a D flat power chord. So the rhythm for each of these is gonna go da, 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 da. So we've got. We do the same thing on the next set of chords. In between those two, we wanna just add the open strings. It's really nothing more than just like. Okay, but it's gonna be very controlled and with the distortion, it's gonna sound awesome. So we've got this. When you're just playing clean, it might sound a little funny, but I promise when we turn the distortion on, it'll sound great. The last step you wanna to add to this are some of those chunking notes. So muting the strings and, and adding some rhythm to it. To be honest, I don't know if they really thought too hard about this. So you just kinda of wanna fill in the gaps. What I'm gonna do is so down, up, down, up. Check, 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 check. And at the end, I'm gonna do two. Okay, so. It changes a bunch in the recording. When he plays it live, he doesn't really follow that uh, to a T. So you can kind of make it your own. Let's turn on the distortion and hear this all in one go. The next riff I'm gonna teach you is Polly, which is also off of Nevermind. I love this one because it's such a simple chord progression, but it sounds so good. He plays it on acoustic, but I'm gonna play this on my electric. So the chords are basically just E minor, going to G, to D, to C. Okay, so the strum pattern's really where this gets interesting. So we have Kind of a weird one. There's some extra notes in there. You'll notice in this one he does play some of the open strings as in between chords. So we have our E minor. So we have a little pickup into the G. Two. Same thing going into the D. And C is pushed. So it's one, two, and three, and four, and The trick is really keeping that right hand rocking down and up, really keeping that eighth note pattern going the whole time. That will really help with your strum pattern. Um, fortunately, that's pretty much it until you hit the chorus. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the chorus chords as well because I really love them. I think they sound awesome. So it starts with a D chord, C, and then D, E flat, however you wanna do it. I like doing my B flat like this. You could do it like this. You'll notice that every other chord is pushed. So we go D, C, and then G, B flat. And we push the C and the B flat chord. So they're just an eighth note before the downbeat. So it's one, two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, four. We wanna make sure we have that rhythm in the chorus. The next tune I'm gonna teach you is All Apologies off the In Utero album. I really love this intro. It's so much fun. Uh, he is in drop D for this song. So I'm gonna teach it to you in this drop D tuning. And he is also down a half step. I'm gonna stay in standard drop D tuning. So D, A, D, G, B, E. 
whereas he will detune his guitar down to E flat, and then that low E string will go down again to uh, drop D or D flat, however you want to think about it. We're just doing standard tuning. is kind of based around the same frets over two different strings. So we kind of have a 9, 10, 12 on the A string and 9, 10, 12 on the D string. So the riff kind of alternates. You can kind of throw in that drop D whenever you want. He sort of kind of throws it in sporadically. I wouldn't overthink it too much. We're going to start with the drop D and then go to 9, 10, 9 on the A string. And then we're going to slide from 10 to 12. So after I slid, I re-hit the 12, 10, 9, so we got, and then we re-hit that low, low drop D, and we do the, that same 9, 9, 10, 9 at the beginning, and we're going to slide from 10 to 12 on the D string this time. So we got. Ten nine on the D string, so we kind of swap what string we're on halfway through the lick. And then we repeat the first part. And then... This one really comes out of left field, but sounds so great. He goes up to the 11th fret of the G string, down to the 9th fret, of the G string and then resolves it to the 12th fret of the D string. So we got. And I do slide into that 11. Let's put this whole riff together. And feel free to add in that sixth string wherever it feels good to you. Um, and really beef up some of those notes, especially the ones on the fifth string. The next riff I'm going to teach you is Come As You Are. We're going to do the intro of this. This one is a little weird. He detunes his guitar entirely down a whole step for this tune. So you would have D, A, C, F, A, D for your tuning. Uh, if you want, you can just detune strings six and five because those are the only ones we're going to be using. So you want to have a D and a G. So the song starts with kind of a little chromatic walk up on the low E string. So we got zero, zero, one, two. You can alternate pick if you want or just do down picks. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to switch to the open fifth string. And we're kind of alternating between those notes. So open fifth, second fret of the sixth, open fifth. Go back to that second fret of the sixth string, hit it twice. One, zero. And then we're going to hit the second fret of the fifth string, and then back to that open sixth. So it really jumps around between strings. Let's recap what we have so far. And then the last note, we just need the second fret of the fifth string, and then we restart. That's it. If you want to sound more authentic, put on a chorus pedal. Uh, he really loved the electroharmonic small stone, but find any chorus pedal that sounds good to you. The fifth and final riff I'm going to teach you is Lithium, also off of Nevermind. It has a such iconic clean intro, and then when the distortion kicks in, it's really rocking and really aggressive. So we're going to talk about both because it is the same chords between the two parts. For this song, he's also in that dropped tuning again. So the guitar is tuned down an entire whole step. So we have our D, G, C, F, A, D tuning. Yes, you can play this in standard tuning if you want. It'll just sound different from the recording. Uh, I find this dropped tuning sounds a lot beefier too, especially when you kick in the distortion. So let's take a look at it. So it starts with an E power chord, and then it's going to go to a G sharp power chord. 
then it's gonna go to a C sharp power chord, then to an A power chord, C power chord, D power chord, B power chord, up to D. And that's it. The hard part is what he's doing with his right hand on these chords. So it starts with the first chord, he just hits it normally. And then he does a little hiccup note and it's always gonna be the open low E string. So we got. And then we go into this G sharp power chord and he's gonna go six and then four. So we got. And we hit that low open string again to connect us to the C sharp. And then the same thing. We're splitting the chord up into the low parts, so the fifth string, and then the high part on the G string. So we got. Okay, another open low E string to get us to the A chord. On this one, he's gonna hit string six, five, four, five. So, so a little different from the others. And then we just strum the chords straight up from the next chord on. So we got C, and then he slides. So we got. Um, so we have. When we get to the part that has distortion, Basically, it's the same thing. You're just gonna ignore all the right hand stuff and just hit the chords as hard as you can. Let's give it a try. Oh no, here's it. You'll notice that I was putting in those open strings in between chords. That is very, very Nirvana-y. So do that as much as you can. It doesn't matter if it sounds weird, it's going to work. Just really crank that distortion. Whatever distortion pedal you have, just put it at 10 and you'll be good. So there you go. That's five Nirvana riffs that I really love. It was so hard for me to just pick five because I really do love them all. They're so, so good. I'd love to know what your favorite Nirvana riffs are. So feel free to comment below and let me know which ones that you like. Remember, when you're playing these riffs, the most important thing here is going to be the attitude. So crank the distortion, crank the amp, and just like smash that guitar and really have a good time. Uh, if your neighbors call the cops on you, you're playing at the correct volume. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you at the next one.